Do you know Gopher? It's an internet protocol used to retrieve documents. It supports hyperlinks. It's quite similar to HTTP. Actually, during the 90s, it was marketed as an HTTP alternative. Nowadays, it's not really used anymore, but some hobbyists are still writing Gopher blogs, also known as Flog. In this video series, we're going to write our own Flog engine using Haskell. So yeah, let's get started. Today, we're going to first bind the TCP socket on the server port, the default port for Gopher. We're gonna need the root privilege to do that, so we're gonna probably want to drop the root privilege in order to serve the documents, because you don't really need it, and security-wise, you shouldn't run any service using the root user. Then we're going to listen and accept incoming connection. So it goes like this. The client opens a new connection. The server accepts this connection but doesn't respond anything. Then the client will send the request containing only the URI of the document. Then the server will respond with the document. And finally, the server is going to close the connection. So let's get started. So usually when I write Haskell program, I always start by specifying the types because that way you are going to leverage the compiler to help you spot obvious mistakes in your design. So yeah, everything starts with the main function. So this function is going to bind the TCP socket on the, on the 70 port and then listen for incoming requests. So we're going to use the bracket function. This function is quite handy when it comes to handling resources that have a specific life cycle. So first we're going to bind the socket. So this function will have this signature here. It will return a socket in a IO context, meaning that this function will have side effects, obviously. So we're going to use quite heavily this undefined function. Basically, it tells the compiler it should be okay. The compiler should compile, but fail during runtime. So it's quite useful when you want to design your program because the compiler is just going to successfully compile your program and tell you if something is wrong type-wise. So yeah, we're going to bind the socket. Then we're going to need another function that closed the socket. It's the resource teardown. And finally, so this function will have this signature here. So basically, it's going to take a socket as input and return an IO action. It's going to perform some side effects. And finally, we will have the handle incoming requests function. So this function is going to take a socket as input and also going to perform some IO action. But unlike the, the close function here, we're just not, we're not going to tear down the resource. We're just going to use it. All right. So let's try to compile this. So we're going to compile our program quite often just to validate the design, right? Let's try to build this program. I'm going to use the stack program to do that. Oh ho! Oh yeah! Here, this class function is actually already provided by the network.socket module. So we, we just don't need to implement it by ourselves. We're just going to reuse it. So yeah, good news. It's already implemented. And it should be good. Yeah, <laughs> all right. So, uh, well, we're going to start by implementing this bind socket function. So it's going to be quite long and boring. So let me just jump in time for you. Later. So yeah, as expected, it was quite tedious and boring. 
So let me just jump on it for you. First, we are creating the socket. Then we are specifying this option here, reuse RDDR. It basically lets you run your program several times in a row. Finally, we want to bind the socket and to listen 10 simultaneous connections on this socket. So as I was saying before, after binding the socket, you don't really need the root privilege anymore, right? So we should just drop them. But we obviously need some kind of configuration data type, right? So let's create the config data type. So this data type will contain uh, the running port. So it's going to be an integer, as well as the user that should run this program. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay. So the the signature is going to change a bit here. Basically, the bind socket will need this configuration as input. And we're going to need to pass this bind socket the configuration. So in a perfect world, we would parse this configuration from a configuration file, maybe a 2ML file. But yeah, for this screencast, we're just going to hard code it here. Uh, we're going to listen to the port 70, as I was saying earlier. And we're going to use my local username to run the program. Okay, let's try to compile that. All right, we're good. So next step, we want to drop the privilege. So let's create a function called drop privileges. This function will take as input a config and will perform some IO action to drop the privilege, right? So as you see here, we are using, we are passing the configuration a bit everywhere. So a good way to avoid that would be to use a reader monad, but we're not going to do that during uh, the screencast. All right, so first let's get the UID, user running the program. For that, we're going to use the get real user ID function here. Then we want to check if this user is root. Basically, we want to ensure we are running the program using the root privilege. If we are not, we don't need to drop anything. So we can just return, right? Then we're going to retrieve the Unix entry for the username we specified in the configuration. So it will be get user entry for name and we're going to use the user from the configuration. And then we're just going to specify the, the group ID to the user group. The user, uh, yeah, we're going to set up the user ID to the user ID of user. And we don't need to return because this is an action by itself. Let's check. All right, we're good. So yeah, we are now successfully both binding the socket, dropping the user privilege, and we close this socket. So we just need to implement the main loop now. So the main loop will be this function here. So this loop, we want to run this loop forever, right? So we're just going to use the forever uh, utility from the control monad module. So first, as, as, as we said here, first we want to accept. Oh yeah. So first we want to accept the incoming connections, right? So yeah, let's just accept a new connection. Accept S. All right. Once we have accepted this connection, we want to fork. Yeah, we want to create a new thread, but uh, we are going to use the fork finally function because here we want to fork a new thread. But as soon as this thread is finished, we want to close the the, the connection. Right? So we will have first, as first argument, the function we will run in a fork. 
And finally, we're going to use the lambda function to close the connection. So yeah, as you see here, we don't really need the PR address. Let's forget about it. All right. Uh, yeah, this function here is not going to return something void. So yeah, let's use the void function here. All right. So for now, we're just going to leave the respond function undefined and see if everything compiles. Uh huh. Oh yeah, I forgot the do symbol here. All right, we're good. So let's start to implement the respond function. As we said here, we don't want to send anything before the client send a request. So first we want to listen. So we're just going to receive something coming from the client and we want to receive 1024 bytes. Then, whoops, then we want to send those bytes to a send response function. So let's write the signature of this function. So it will take an input a byte string. What's a byte string, right? So a byte string is a, data, a Haskell data structure that represents an array containing random bytes. It's not text, it's just raw bytes. So this function is going to take as input a byte string and will return a byte string and will probably perform some side effects such as reading a file on the disk or something like that, right? So we'll leave it undefined for now. We're just going to finish to implement this function. So yeah, we're going to send this response. And so we are going to take the output byte string and send it back to the client. So we're just going to use the send all command here. It will send all the bytes containing in the byte string to, no, not the socket, to the, uh, the client, so to the connection here. Yeah, I was about to send that to the listening socket. Uh, let's see if we are right. Oh, there, there is a problem here. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. See here, the connection is defined in this block, not uh, as input here, so I cannot access it. Uh, I cannot use a where function here. Yeah, this is a, a top level function, actually. My bad. So yeah, we're going to, this function is going to take as input uh, a socket, so the connection, and will perform some IO action, basically sending bytes to this socket. And we're going to call that con, right? And we're going here to respond to this con here, and we're going to rename here con to S. I probably... All right. Let's see if it compiles now. See, the compiler is quite handy here because it, it helps us spotting our errors, our design errors, right? So yeah, here we want to send a response. So what kind of response do we want to send? So in this episode, we're not going to send anything meaningful. We're just going to send the hello world string. According to the Gopher specification, the answer should look like this, you know, uh, our string followed by an empty line only containing a dot. So yeah, no, not an empty line, but a line containing a dot, right? All right, so let's do that. So we still have an argument, but we don't really care for now, for this episode. We just want to send the response, right? So what's the response? Well, it's the concatenation of our string followed by the empty line containing the dots. So we're just going to scroll that end, right? So let's specify those two. Those two strings will be text strings. So coming from the text package here, the data, the text package. So yeah, first we will have the hello world string. So the resp str will be 
hello world. I'm using the overloaded strings here, language extension. So I don't really need to, to specify how to convert this string to a data text string, right? And yeah, we need the end. So the end line will be basically a new line, a dot, a new line, right? And here we are not entirely done, because if you remember correctly, we need to send back a byte string. But here we have uh, basically a text. So we need to encode this text to, uh, we're going to use the UTF-8 codec here, right? So I guess that's pretty much it. Let's try to compile and see if we were right. Oh, there's a problem. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There is a typo here. And all right, we are pretty much done. Let's try this program out, right? So first, let's run it. So as you can see, I cannot run it using my regular user. So let's use the root user. And it should now listen to the 70 port. Let's try it out. See, perfect. It just returned the hello world string. Let's just ensure that we are currently running using the, not the root user, right? Uh-huh. We are using the root user. This is not normal. Oh yeah, I know why. <laughs> I probably just forgot to drop the privileges. Yeah, see here, just after this bind socket, we're going to return the privilege. And so let's try to build that again. And let's run it again. And now we shouldn't be using the root. See, I'm using my current local user. Perfect. All right, that's all for today. See you on next episode. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like it, please see this video. If you like to see more of those, you can subscribe through email, RSS or via Mastodon. Please do not subscribe to my YouTube channel. Take care. See you next week.